I want to set up a couple of scanners. There's a, a lot of new pro traders out there and basically I want to try to go back to the very, very basics uh, and assume that you've just got hold of the software and you're wondering what on earth to do. If we open up the scanning toolbox here, uh, there, there are so many scans you can get dizzy and they will produce so many results you'll get twice as dizzy. So I've always tried to, or no, for a long, long time, tried to limit myself to three scans, full stop. Um, not three scans each day, but just three scans with very slight variations. The first one, scan for patterns and events. At the moment, I'm ticking 21 days, so I want to find a stock that is at or was very recently at a 21-day high. Show me any stock with increasing volume four days in a row. That does not happen very often in Australia. Show me anything where the on-balance volume is 25% greater than five days ago. Show me any stock where the volume today was 500% greater than yesterday. Now, this scan, I'm going to go from, um, uh, in actual fact, 0.01 through to uh, 0.75 cents. So certainly a scan looking at the lower end of the market. Uh, my dollars traded filter, I go back to 500,000 and I ignore anything that hasn't got 12 months of data. Hit start scan on that one. Now, really, this is where the fun begins. This is where you have to make a selection. So as, as much as I want to narrow down and tighten the number of scans, um, it really doesn't matter what you scan. You still have to make decisions. Now, in this particular scan, there were 37 results. I've already been through them. Um, and one thing I will say, in this area, in particular, let's say from one cent to $0.75, uh, sorry, 75 cents, especially way down under $0.20, cents, anything with more than $1.5 billion issued cap, I'm really not interested. Now, first stock that's come up uh, in this scan is AHZ. It's come up with a breakout. It broke out today. Interestingly, got to 40 cents, backed off and closed at 38. If we uh, are looking at one year of data, we can see that that 40 cent level is pretty critical. So now what I'd be hoping is that there's just a few days consolidation, let's say between uh, this breakout here at 36 and 40. If you can just stay in there for a few days, then break 40, I'd be very tempted to uh, have a look at that one. Um, that is AHZ. So... Yeah, your on balance volume is right. There's a lot of volume come in over the last week or so. There's a fair bit in favour of AHZ. That's the first scan, first stock. That goes into a watch list and uh, we keep an eye on it for a day or two. Now, there's nothing there for me. Um, this one, AML, is also interesting. I'm going to go back to six months data. While it's come up, uh, it would have come up yesterday in this same scan, and it's followed through today. So this candle here was a 21-day high. That's what we were looking for, a breakout. This is a 21-day high, and there could be a few more that are 21-day highs. But what caught my eye is just putting a line across there, uh, which is about the 33 cent level. And to my mind, a break of um, that 33 cents, I could be very tempted to climb on board. Uh, there's only 585 million out there. 
So there's a potential buyer there at 33 and a half. A couple of others in there that caught my eye, OEL. Uh, same sort of thing. I'd just be prepared to put uh, a resistance line across that sort of level. We are at the upper end of the um, issued cap at 1.53 billion, but uh, that level is about 6.4 cents. So you might be tempted to buy 6.5, maybe 6.6 on OEL. Another one in there was RFX. And again, my eye just went pretty much straight to this 17.5 cent level. Um, Again, I'd throw that into a watch list and keep an eye on it. Really good volume for the last couple of days. Something may be brewing with RFX. Only 530 million out there. And the last one was PAR. And uh, again, what caught my eye was this 40 cent level. So I'll draw a line across there. And what I like about this is the fact that went to 40, got through, had a good go, uh, got to 43 and backed off, tried again the next day and couldn't make it and has been fading and pretty much today came back and closed the gap. Now, you've had a good spurt in on-balance volume. There's good volume today. Uh, only 120 million out there. I would certainly keep an eye on PAR. But that's the uh, that's the first scan. Second scan would be scanning Davis. I have in here in the scan period 34 days or 30 yeah 34 days. Uh, tick in a box and the filters. I'll go in there from 50 cents to $3.75. I'll add a zero in this filter. So I want the stock to have done 500, uh, sorry, 5 million in the last week and still the same 280 days. And again, I hit start scan. Even with this um, more refined scan. There's still seven stocks there uh, from which to choose. I have um, had a look at LYC. I like the fact uh, first Davis box there was resistance at 64 and a half. There's now resistance at 65, 265. I think it's pretty obvious if um, if LYC can break 265 stops at 247 uh, I would certainly add uh, I'd certainly be involved in that trade um, from our point of view uh, we originally bought the break of 245 or 247 or something back here and we would be adding to the position on a break of 265 on LYC the other one that caught my eye in there was NEC and really, without even thinking about the Davis box, there's just a lot of resistance across there at 240, 241. Uh, I'd be very tempted to go along with that trade pretty much exactly as it is. Uh, so you'd buy 242. I wouldn't put a stop down at 212. I'd look at this resistance up here more like 222. Uh, so less risk. But NEC and LYC are the two that caught my eye in that scan. The only other one that I might do on the odd occasion uh, for superannuation in particular, I'll just back up. That might have been a bit quick. Just go into scan fundamentals. Uh, show me anything with a dividend yield more than 6%. Uh, that's it. I don't even check uh, what's in here. I could probably expand that to, um, well, comfortably expand that to $20, see what happens. Um, there were a couple in there that um, interested me, even again, that first one, AHY, where we've done a lot of work 
around this sort of level, a dollar thirty. A breakthrough there would interest me because we've got a gap up here, dollar forty-four. We've got a gap up here, dollar fifty-six. Uh, we have uh, dividend yield is it's showing seven point seven two. Now, I'd probably put it to you that there won't be a dividend. Simply, if I bring in more data, uh, this has just been a tale of woe for some time, and I dare say that dividend is out of date. Uh, I, I wouldn't be counting on it. The next one that came up for me in that scan was Cromwell, Cromwell Property Group. We're starting to sort of be able to box off this data here. Cromwell from memory pays a dividend quarterly and I think you'll find that is that 7.76. So uh, keep an eye on Cromwell, despite whatever we might think about um, property at the moment. IPH was the third one. Uh, I just like the bottoming action here. If um, if that breaks above about three dollars sixty, uh, I think four dollars ninety five dollars becomes possible. Again, we're showing a dividend yield of uh, six point one six percent, forty percent franking. Uh, again, I doubt that uh, the dividend will be that high, but. With these, uh, with a fundamental scan, I'm looking for something with a dividend, but it's got to be something where there is also the added bonus of a capital gains potential. So for those who are just starting out on their trading journey, we will be hanging this uh, second part of this broadcast up on YouTube uh, with the rest of the uh, training videos. So. It'll be there for everyone to look at and uh, go through and you know, don't hesitate to make your own changes, but also uh, just be consistent and get used to something before you decide to mess around with it. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Touchwood. Talk to you next week. Cheers.